movie until he <laughs> 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 Is Flash it too late Zorro. to re-edit it and change it? Uh, we, we could spin Flash Zorro off. He has his own. That's yes. true. He James runs Wolf. really slowly. James won't be his heart like that. Strange enough, he'd sound the same. <laughs> <laughs> he would actually be better in the <laughs> Yes, he would, he would be Obi-Wan Kenobi, yes. Now the boring answer is if we had more than 44 minutes, we probably would have been able to squeak him in. It's a safe answer. By the way, when you grab that mic, I thought you were about to drop like a mad beat because you go. <laughs> <laughs> that may be your tempt. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, here in the uh, black hoodie with the gray t shirt. Is that a Okay, so uh, this question is a two parter. Um, how long did it take you to do this movie with the process of animation? Forever. <laughs> uh, about a year, I think, from script to screen, I think about a year. And my uh, second question is how long did the voiceover take? Because I know one episode, which is about 22 minutes, is four hours, so did it take about eight hours? Or? Who <laughs> <laughs> are you? <laughs> You know. He's our, next, our next director. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, mostly some two sessions, maybe one pickup. Yeah. But it's like per actor. I mean, uh, you guys were, in, you know, in the control room for like two weeks. Yeah, I want to say all together, maybe ten hours. Like all the actors getting them separately and recording everybody sure. plus the ADR. Yeah. But they give Probably. us lunch. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Is the sun still there? I haven't seen it. <laughs> Generally, as a voice actor, you get booked for a four-hour session, and you usually run through it within two hours. It seems like we get through them pretty yeah. quickly. And then you come back for that ADR, that automatic dialogue replacement, where you watch the screen, and then it's boop, boop, boop. And on the fourth, where the fourth beep would be, that's where you say your line. You're watching it, you got to match the lip clap. And it's fun stuff, but uh, that's hard. Ah, watching yeah. you guys, like... Oh, man. So, with the, there was a movie in 2007 I did called uh, TMNT, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And, uh, and I played Leonardo, the leader. Anyway, <laughs> so the way it worked was it was bought by the Weinsteins came in and they wanted to change the direction of it all. And so we had to re-ADR every line of that movie. Shut up. Fully animated. So all that that you're seeing is actually ADR. And, uh, and the first season of Johnny Test, it was like that because it was made in Canada, and they had a Canadian actor playing Johnny, but the, the creator of it, Scott Fellows, really wanted me because I was the original Johnny, and so I had to go back in and re-ADR somebody else's. You had like a flap for every extra, so, for every A. So you're watching it, you have to then like go to the beats of somebody else, and it's really weird. So if you watch that first season, Johnny does it. He talks really kind of slow and everything, and whenever I do it, he's like, he's way up here, and he's really fast, and everything is just totally awesome. And he's like, that's awesome. I'm like, oh, it's not. So, ADR is, is one of those processes that you just either love or hate. Do you love it? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful. Like, I, I got my start in anime, and it's literally the hardest form, I think, of, of doing this kind of voice work because you're not only translate, you're not, you're not translating words, you're translating a thought because a lot of stuff that culturally, like with Japan, you're like, your mother is a goat. We're like, that's not really that bad of a thing. It's weird. But you know, <laughs> to be able to translate that thought and fit it into a finite amount of space is, is a really tricky gig. Um, so I cut my teeth doing that and that taught me how to, like, you know, mess those flaps up and make it sound believable. Um, so that's, I, I would definitely, like, there's, there's, I think there's some studios here that still do, uh, anime, like if that's your thing too, that'd be fun to just kind of like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's it's a good. I mean, how is it though for you guys on the other side with ADR? Is it just like, oh, you guys, or is it fun because you're actually then seeing those final jokes and everything? What's well, new jokes? Yeah, the new joke. The new joke is always the most exciting joke. And even watching it today, it was like, that was a late one. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like nudging me every time. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Laugh. <laughs> I always feel bad in the ADR process. Like it's so fun just like watching you guys read off the script. Because half of the time we're like just cracking up. As Jim said, we're watching them from behind the glass, and hopefully when you guys look up and see us, we're just like busting up. Half the time they have us in stitches. We also right? look ridiculous. Well, anyway. <laughs> and, and here's that's the other thing is they'll be like, like you do something, you're like, whoa, hey, and then you look at them and they go. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's always great too when you get that, great, that button like you know, <laughs> some of the studios with the button sticks whatever while so it's like oh that's a great job Troy just give us two seconds <laughs> recast <laughs> <laughs> Swelling at me. Is that button down? Oh, hi, buddy. Uh, it's always our job, but yeah, it's it's super fun to, to live in that vacuum, and, and we actually make up what they're saying uh, more than two. We just see this, and it's just a bunch of gesturing. Um, so yeah, do you do the scratch stuff ever? I, that's, I do a lot of it. Jim does a lot of it. Oh, um, uh, Brandon is. Well, we so we we put in jokes afterwards. Uh, after they've reported, just to add more to it, and and Brandon and I actually do the voices in the editing room. So there we have versions of that. Do you guys hear those? And you're like, I'm worried. So the These scratch guys are really good. good. The scratch <laughs> track is uh, so like after they've animated it, they've changed a line. They'll go in and, and record that line, and so we hear it back the scratch because it's been animated to their voice, and then we have to fill it in, kind of at our pacing and, and such. The sod had a, one of the huge speeches there was all done in the ADR thing. Was it, did you do that? Yeah. Well but, done. But, you, but Batman and Superman. <laughs> so. Just oh, Batman so Superman. you know we're coming for you. Coming <laughs> 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 hard on your heels. But that's the nerve wracking part of ADR is like, we know we're not going to do as good as you guys, but we have to temp it in because it has, something has to be there for the animators to work with. At the time, yeah. Yeah, and so we just know that we then like kind of hamstring your performance. Like then you're locked into the lip sync that they give to our scratch. Yeah. And so a lot of times when we're watching you in ADR, it's it's all about like okay, we're watching the lip sync as you guys are performing it. Sometimes it's just like off by you know one vowel is misplaced, and we all all go into like work face mode as we're like. You know, the engineer is like trying to like just scrub the frame. The technology, sure they can change it now, yeah. Yeah, so it's all like like right in the room there. This is what Brandon does in on his side of the booth. Yeah. No, 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 no keyboard. No keyboard. <laughs> just makes this Voodoo on you! That's another great part of it. Voodoo? The engineer. <laughs> The engineer is such an important part of it right. too, and they can craft now using Pro Tools and all these things. They can. There's actually programs, right, for ADR that make it match the scratch a little more, like put syllables in the right places. It's it's it still needs to be finessed, but and it's the finessing that we're doing a lot of times when you guys do a line. It, it might be a little off, but instead of having to do it 600 times yeah. to get it right, the engineer will take you know one of the takes and try and slide the vowels around to make them line up with the little mouth movements. So, yeah. Are you, doesn't, doesn't, aren't you less excited about <laughs> animation now? You're thinking, of, like, maybe dental school. <laughs> Way to go. Okay, next question on the animator and the gray sweatshirt. Gray sweatshirt. That's you. Don't you dare turn around. With the rhino on it. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know, when it comes to playing the same, <laughs> it yes. comes to playing the same character in, in a different medium, uh, how would you change, like, if the Flash in one instance has to be very jokey, but in another instance he has to be very serious? Yeah. Uh, how is it for you for that? I channel Troy Baker. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun, like, in Young Justice. Uh, Young Justice and... Got to play the Flash, and he was more serious. It was not, that wasn't a jokey Barry Allen Flash. Um, and so it was totally different. You just, you know, I mean, it's, it's all, it all does come down to exactly what Troy was saying before. It's all about acting. It's all about living in those characters. I mean, voice actors, we live in little padded rooms and we talk to ourselves, you know. But we live in our heads with these characters and we see them. And so I just picture them, you know, with a serious face or with a happy face. And it just kind of comes out. But it's, uh, it's fun when it's a character that's actually close to your own voice too, it makes it a little easier. So yeah. It's, uh, if you picture them as a Lego minifigure, it's that changes always it. fun. It's always fun. Very fun. Very fun. Yeah. Uh, in the row in front, in the, yes, you in the green sweater, you had a uh, question? Yeah, you yeah. <laughs> You won! Um, I have a friend and he wants to make a movie when he's older, so what would be the best advice for him? No. No, the best, the best advice for you is sign him up and yeah. get 10%. And you're, like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm going to help you make this movie, and then you just wait for the money to roll in. And I 
Yeah, and second you can thing. find an angel investor, <laughs> secure venture capital. What's great is you can make a movie on a phone. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you should be making a movie. You should be making movies. You should all be making movies on your parents' Let's phones. make a movie. Let's you make a movie. movie. <laughs> I'm going to tape you asking about that. Look at everybody say hi. 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 That's going to be wonderful in Act 2. We're going to need a release for Dark and Stormy Night. What, do you have a phone? Um, no. Well, we should talk to your parents. Good parents. Do you have a phone? Yeah, the So, on the new, I think it's on the the on all iPhones right now, they've got the iMovie thing that you can actually create trailers. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody done this? It's incredible. Yeah. You have like storyboards and it'll actually walk you through. It's actually a pretty good little film class. That you've got different, you can do like the rom com, you can do the horror, you can do the thriller, you can do the big blockbuster movie. All these things. But anyway, uh, there's, yeah, like you're saying, there's so many tools that are available to make movies. I say make Story. Movies. Story is key. No matter what, the story is the key thing, would you say? I mean, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you should also get my son has a, a, it's called Action Movie. And so you can take really uh, footage of your parents and have them blown up. And, and <laughs> <laughs> you have that one, it's great, right? But, but yes, that all comes after the story, which is the most important part. I also had a second thing. Oh. My friend here wants to ask a question. Oh. <laughs> all right. uh, okay. So, how was it in the first movie when you were playing Joker, like the villain, but then in the second movie you all of a sudden switched the, to the hero? Well, the first of these? Um, oh, the second. Yeah, the movie, Joker. Like when you were playing I did Joker, Joker in Arkham Origins and Assault on Arkham. And this is what's so cool about this is that. Yeah. <laughs> now I hate you! <laughs> That's, that's what's so cool about this is that, you know, again, you've got so many years of Batman that, and so many different people that have played this, kind of like our, our King Lear, you know, or Richard III. You've got so many actors that have played them so well, and because the character's so solid, it allows itself to be interpreted upon. Um, so, you know, I can be Joker in one universe and turn around be Batman in the next. And that just, that the onus is on me to make it different. So how was it? Awesome, are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. Good guy, the best bad But how did you do it? What's your process? I think that's more so like you want to know how he makes that switch, right? Uh, yeah, I'm crazy, dude. Uh, <laughs> that's true, he is there's, crazy. There's, 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 I'm just a little bit off. And this is the cool thing. Like, um, I heard comedians say this. If you want to find the next future generation of comedians, go to any high school or school with yeah. a kid that's sitting outside in the hall that's in trouble. <laughs> Probably going to be a hilarious topic. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, you know, all of us are, are weird. Like, we all grew up. We were talking about this last night too. We, we weren't the kids that fit in. We weren't the cool kids. We didn't have like all the all the other things that some of the other kids have. And they're gonna go off and they're gonna live great lives. But I I would take the kid that's just a little bit weird, that's just a little bit off, that doesn't fit in, is awkward, um, because there's an artist in there that that is budding. And, and I don't know if you're the filmmaker or, or whatever. But dude, if you're weird, embrace it. If you're a nerd. That's a red badge of curves that you wear on your arm with so much pride. Um, because in time, you'll be running things. Yes. <laughs> Nerds rule the world. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh -ha. Ooh -ha. Ooh -ha. I encourage all my fellow nerds in here too. Don't ever let anybody make you feel. If you feel different, you're doing it right. If you're fitting in, shake it up. <laughs> Do something different. Uh, that's my whole thing. That is a good place to stop, I think. If you had a question you wasn't asked, you can ask them upstairs. Yeah, there, yeah. Remind them, go upstairs uh, now for autographs, photo ops, and I uh, just to talk more with these guys.